We're at the corner of Catherine and Bannister Street in Hartford where police and fire personnel are still on scene for a fire that broke out around 6 o'clock this evening. Pieces of glass litter the pavement where the boy was struck and right on the curb, a memorial has been erected by the kids in the neighborhood. Emergency personnel are on scene for what we believe right now to be a drowning. LifeStar took off moments ago. Police say most of these car break-ins are crimes of opportunity, and the easiest way to prevent yourself from becoming a victim is to simply lock your car door. For the characters that I'm standing with, most of them have been here at least twice. But it was much more than that. She would drive him around, text him, and have sex with him in her home, in her car, and at the school. Nearly 40 years from now, Amtrak is proposing on putting in a $115 billion high-speed railway that will cut diagonally across the state. Now the community has gathered together, passing out signs and posters, hoping she'll return. Firefighters were battling the heat just as much as they were the fire today, using this spigot to cool off. There have been 14 homicides in the city of Bridgeport this year, and this ordinance is in direct response to that escalation in violence. The Coast Guard helicopter has just arrived on scene for one boater that went missing. The people that practice the Sikh religion within these temple doors were sadly shaken by a shooting that occurred in a similar temple over in Wisconsin. Firefighters have cleared the scene and all that remains is this flame, burning off the excess gases that were left behind in this propane leak. When Wayne and Linda Guyette died in this fire, it had an impact on the entire community. And while the family was searching for closure, the unthinkable happened. Police are still looking for the driver of a car that hit and killed a New Britain teenager on Monday. 16-year-old Jackson De Jesus was walking in the street with his friends at the time. In Louisiana, Christmas came early for 70 military families. Members of the 239th Military Police Company returned Saturday from a one-year deployment in Iraq. The two were in the audience for the midnight premiere of the new Batman movie when chaos erupted. Barton was injured in the shootings and rushed to the hospital with shotgun pellets lodged in his neck and arm. Police are using surveillance video to try to catch two men who shot and seriously hurt a couple of grocery store workers Thursday. 23-year-old Christina Morton Lane of Old Lyme is facing DUI charges after striking two motorcyclists on I-95 this morning. Current cartoonist Bob Engelhart has a problem with Supreme Court Justice John Roberts, but not a political problem. He'll explain in FaceTime. Plus, completely adorable, in a completely terrifying kind of way, how three bear cubs got in one man's back seat. 84th floor, west office, 12 people trapped. These words were written on a piece of paper that fluttered down from the 84th floor of the World Trade Center 2 the morning of September 11, 2001. And a decade later, these same words revealed an ending to Denise Scott and her two daughters that was never truly known. I don't like the word closure, but you have to have an explanation. You have to have some way of explaining or having, having an ending. So uh, we all just wrote the same ending, and it wasn't correct. The Scott family had always thought that their father, Randy, who was working on the 84th floor of the World Trade Center 2, had died instantly when the second plane hit. But his final chapter was rewritten after a call from New York's chief state medical examiner in August 2011. I don't even think I asked her what was on the note. I think I said, I don't want to know until I see it. So the minute I saw it, I knew it was his handwriting. Underneath the rubble and debris of the fallen towers in lower Manhattan, after the attacks, the small piece of paper was found. But it was another feat to find the family of its writer. The note was preserved and handed down from one person to the next. First a guard at the Federal Reserve had it handed to him. Then it was given to the September 11th Memorial and Museum. All the while, a drop of blood on the note provided evidence of its author. When the Scott family received that note, one of the daughters asked Denise, was their father fearful? She answered no. He was hopeful. That note is a sign that he and the others were trying to make it out of that building alive. Denise had that conversation with her daughters six months after she became aware the note existed. But she said there was never a right time to tell them knowing it would reopen old wounds everything and you know you just relive it over again like it was yesterday just like it was yesterday a sentiment shared by connecticut families attending this year's tribute service at the september 11th memorial in westport randy scott his name is forever connected to those believing they would make it home from westport david mckay reporting for some the future of transportation in connecticut is laying track from one corner to another but will trains just be passing us by but we have bold ideas, and this is a time to be bold. 
Um, it's a t chance to really say, what do we want Connecticut and the entire Northeast region to look like? Nearly 40 years from now, Amtrak is proposing on putting in a $115 billion high-speed railway diagonally across the state. The aim is to dramatically reduce travel time between Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C., the prime northeastern corridor that is expected to grow in population and commuters over the next couple of years. Residents I spoke with today said they're interested in the plan as long as they can reap the benefits. I think it could be a really valuable addition to the um, transportation system that we have now. I need to travel from Boston to New York a lot and I would love it if I could do that faster. Well, if, if it was more efficient and, it, and, and the trip was a lot shorter, definitely. I think that would, would draw a lot more people um, to travel by train. But as of now, the next-gen high-speed railway would send express trains hurtling at 220 miles per hour through Connecticut without making any primary stops in the state. Laying out alternatives. Mm -hmm. uh, Amtrak has put one forward, um, and that's an alignment that uh, uh, essentially heads up uh, Danbury, Waterbury, Route 84 to Hartford. A second-tier express service remains an option, offering just a couple of stops in the state, but transportation officials say they are still determining just where those stops might be. So I live in New York now and I have my home is in Boston. I go back and forth all the time. I would love to have this high speed train up as soon as possible. From the tracks in Hartford, David McKay report. A simple hello would do. Thank you very much. You may recognize this bouncing tigger or cuddly old bear, but do you know this man? Revered as one of the best voice actors of our time, Jim Cummings' voice has been noted in hundreds of television shows, movies, and video games as an assortment of different animated characters. Let's get dangerous. <laughs> Garbage day. Hold on, dog. Control yourself. Well, I'm here on account of because of this bodacious convention, and uh, people apparently still like Winnie the Pooh and Tigger too, and uh, so I brought a pot of honey. And uh, a few stripes to do some bouncing. He was one amongst many guests invited to greet fans at this year's Connecticut popular culture convention, Kineticon. Kineticon is a multi-genre convention featuring fan for fans of anime, video games, comic books, science fiction, fantasy, board games, role-playing games, miniatures games, uh, pretty much anything nerdy, you know, pop culture reference type stuff. Everybody here has their own real special interests, but... They like everything that's related to it as well. Matthew Daigle started the event with a group of University of Hartford seniors back in 2002 to assimilate the more widely known comic book convention known as Comic-Con into a local setting. Now the fan following has increased tenfold. Everybody here makes the convention their own. I mean, they put their own spin on it. We, we provide the space and we provide 7,000 hours of different scheduled programming but a lot of times the most interesting thing that, things that happen are the things that the attendees make happen. For most of the people I'm standing with, it's the second time that they've been to the convention, but it's the 10th anniversary for Kineticon. It's great because it has so many fandoms. It's not just anime, it's not just steampunk, it's everything at once. Anime. I collect anime and manga. It covers a wide range of genres. Uh, you've got all different types of shows, romance, comedy, sitcoms, all name it, all animated. For the majority attending, it's about sharing similar interests. My favorite thing about Kineticon is being in costume for a particular show, walking down the hall, meeting someone in costume for that same show, and recognizing each other and becoming friends because of it. And this is how I actually got started at Kineticon. It's a good release from reality, you know, like, you know, you have your job and stuff like that, but you come here and you know you, you let loose. You can be another character. Of course, for Jim Cummings, being another character is his job, so you would expect the convention would be a lot like work for him. A Q and A and autograph sessions and just fun stuff. You know, these are my people. <laughs> but then again, he may just be having fun. It's great. It's great. This is a great place, a great venue, great crowd, and uh, I'm having a ball. From Hartford, David McKay reporting.